Worlds of Fire fan, my name's Karen Fire, and welcome back to Conan Exiles. Today I'm updating my Isle of Scepter review for Conan Exiles for the full release. This is for the full game, of course, so I did do one when the game wasn't quite complete, and I thought it was well due time I give it an update and tell you what I kind of think about this DLC. Is it worth paying the money to buy this DLC? Is it worth it at all? Let's find out. So I've got a few pros and cons here. The Isle of Scepter, just to give you a little idea. If you've never heard of the Isle of Scepter DLC and you have no idea what it's about. The Isle of Scepter is an island. You are shipwrecked alone. You have nothing but scraps. And the idea is you have to come here and survive. You're going to find things like dungeons here. New weapons, new armor and all sorts of new biomes and the new land. This is what you can find in the Isle of Scepter is a map DLC so you can explore and enjoy an entirely new adventure apart from the Exiled Lands map. So you've got two maps now from this kind of series and game uh, now that the Isle of Scepter is here. Now it does have some things that make it unique like it has 14 different Elder Vaults which are classed as dungeons. They all give individual uh, unique loot and you have things like events like a storm you have a surge here, okay, a light shrine, you can summon these crazy events where lots of thralls and animals drop on your head and you have to fight them off and then you can tame some of them and it kind of goes like that. You have your usual beautiful areas to build, you have your building factor, you are satisfied in the way of you have your sandbox game where you can chill out and do whatever you like and you have a lot of freedom. You do not have to follow a linear pattern in the Isle of Scepter at all. Uh, you can have a lot of freedom that way and kind of explore and do whatever you like. But this can also be a bad thing in some games because the Isle of Scepter does lack an end game. You have no end game here, uh, but you do have that freedom, so that's the thing. So once you've got everything, you kind of can't do anything. So that does get rid of the PvE side of the game once you've completed everything you want to in the Isle of Scepter, unless you move on to another map. Or perhaps use mods or if you're in pvp that's kind of what gives you the end game here like it usually does with conan anyway but there are plenty of things to see um they added a load of camps in the early access one of my biggest gripes was there wasn't enough to see there was a lot of undead and there's just not much life on the Isle of scepter now they've updated it and they finalized it and they've added a ton of new camps which adds a lot of enjoyment factor you have all these new places to explore and that's what makes the Exile Lands very enjoyable as well being able to find these different settlements and have a look through them and just explore and enjoy yourself lots of different destinations they even added an entire island on the southern part which wasn't part of the early access which they really didn't need to do but they did and they went full out and showed the community that they do care and they want to add more things in that makes this DLC exciting. So it's definitely a really good addition there. There's lots to do, which is always nice. Lots of camps, lots to explore, which is a massive plus. They kind of have like a thing where you have two unnamed cities as well, which you could both explore and enjoy. Whereas on the XL lands, you only really have one of those. So that is uh, something that's really cool as well about the Isle of Scepter. You have a lot going on. You got a big storm in the middle. Storm isn't great these days because they, it's kind of lost its use. Uh, it used to be a lot more useful in uh, early access, but nowadays it doesn't really have much use and you can get the contents you get from the storm out of the storm. But if you did want to have some fun in the middle as an event, it's definitely one of those that you could go ahead and do. Now, Elder Vaults is something else you can do. Elder Vaults are absolutely great. I think these vaults definitely make Scepter and it's something great they did stick in an early access so it's a very very good feature here you've got so many different dungeons to go through so many different loot pools to go and you know get all your stuff it is a really good feature uh elder Vox is definitely my favorite part of scepter i'm not gonna lie i like exploring them and having a look around perhaps you find chests that you've never found before or things like that is also really cool the Lay Shrine event is also pretty fun as well. You gather stuff and you can activate a Lay Shrine or a Surge. And that is where you can go ahead and go and fight things that are summoned in from the external lands. 
you know, tame lots of things there. Great for group activity. They also have the one thing with the uh, grey ones pulled now. But you can also do that as a group activity where you summon a boss and you can all come together and fight it. And that's a really cool addition as well. They really, you know, tried to give to the PvE players this time around. Give them something to do as well with this DLC, which is a really big plus in my book. The only problem with Sipta, really, when it comes to this DLC, is if you're just starting out, it could be very unclear where the beginner kind of areas are and what to start off on. So, like, uh, where you'd get your first thralls or pets or things like that. It can be a little bit tricky to know where to start off with that one because on the Exiled Lands, you'd have this kind of progression scale. As you go up the map, it's a lot harder. Now, Sipta doesn't have this. It's just everywhere has different things. Um, the middle is like kind of the hardest area, but some bits in other areas are also very tricky. And the uh, area where you usually start off isn't always clear. So there is that. It can be unclear on the progression scale as well. So what you kind of do next, you do have to explore for yourself on Zipta quite a lot to kind of know what to do. So that's one thing that can be a big con with this map. However, if you just take your time to have a little look, maybe at a starter guide on YouTube, I do actually have one. If, it, if you're looking for something to help you out, then uh, I'll leave that in the link in the description down below. But it is, uh, it's very good. It will show you a few things like it's like, oh, you should go here, you know, to start off. Or you should go and um, go to this vault at this certain level kind of thing. And that's kind of what it will show you kind of what to do, which the game does not. However, if you didn't want that option, you can also use the journey steps. So that's also something that will show you kind of what to do. It doesn't always give you the full picture, so there is that. But there are some additions to that journey reward kind of thing nowadays you can go ahead and use. For the Honor Sifter, would I buy it these days? How much is it? You know, would it be a good purchase? Well, the Honor Sifter right now for me is £17.99. In early access, I think that was about £15-ish. Pounds. Um, they didn't really ask for a lot of money on this DLC, which I think is really good considering they added a whole massive section to the map and they've reworked it quite a lot in comparison to, you know, in, in comparison to the early access. They changed a lot of things. They kind of revamped the whole thing. They got rid of some stuff, added some stuff. They added a lot what people were kind of wanting and asking. And that was really nice to see as well. Um, so I, I definitely think it's worth buying it for the experience of the adventure. It's another kind of, you know, adventure time that you can have. And enjoy when you get bored of Exiled Lands, you can come on the Alicipta. And I think for 17 quid, it's absolutely worth it because you know it's, it's not much money at all they're asking, especially for a DLC of that kind of size. It's a very normal price to ask for, so I'd definitely say worth it if you're worried about it. Just wait for a sale or something like the Christmas sale you'd usually get. Uh, I would say just wait for something like that, but honestly, I think it's a very, very fair price they're asking for. Yeah, let me know what you think about this DLC. If you already own it and you kind of listen to my review, what would be some of your pros and cons about Zipta that people sitting on the fence not sure what to do and if to buy it or not? Uh, let them know your pros and cons of this map. Maybe that will help them a bit as well if they're still on the edge, you know. Um, but that, that will be all good. But anyway, thank you for watching. I love you all and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Oh yeah, a little thing I forgot to mention before the end of this video. Well, it's already ended, but you know what. <laughs> if you want to find the starter guide and kind of what you're looking for, you just need to come to my channel and uh, it's pretty much this one. 16 beginner tips and tricks. There you go, that's that one. And then another one that's really good is what is there to do on the other sips? There could be another one if you do end up purchasing it and you're kind of stuck and don't know what to do. Also, if you're stumped for content or guides, I've got a whole playlist covering a bunch of things about this map. Um, there's a previous review as well in there if you were interested in having a look at that one and kind of seeing how it's progressed from now to then. But yeah, there's, uh, there's that.